Sampling is an important part of the research process. It involves deciding who you're going to collect data from, how you're going to choose those elements, and how many you will choose. There are 10 key points that you need to consider. Before you can consider collecting your data, you must have a clear idea of what you want to know. Your research aims will determine who the relevant participants will be and how you will go about collecting data from them. The population refers to the people, organisations or items of interest for your research questions. So, who do you want to know about? Is it your staff, your students, your employers or a specific group such as full-time students or early leavers? The most valid and reliable information will come from data collected from every member of the population, a census. This is usually difficult to achieve due to the cost and time constraints, so a sample is required. That's a smaller representative subset of that population. It's unlikely that the results you get from a sample will perfectly match the results you would have got from the whole population, so you should always be careful when generalising your findings. This makes choosing a representative sample all the more important. There are numerous ways to choose your sample, including simple, stratified and quota sampling. Picking the right method for your population and research needs is key to achieving a representative sample that will provide valid and reliable data. Many sampling methods require a sampling frame. This is a list or database that identifies all or a subset of the target population. A good sampling frame must be accurate, up to date and allow a representative sample to be drawn from it. The size of the sample is a very important factor when determining how precisely the sample represents the population. The aims of the research and the decisions that need to be taken as a result will help decide how big the sample should be. Sampling error is the difference between the sample statistics and the actual population statistics, and as such it's always present unless you conduct a census. Sampling error can be reduced by increasing the sample size and having a good representative sample. If the achieved sample is not fully representative, what's known as biased, there are statistical techniques that can be used to correct this and make the results more accurate. The most common technique is called weighting, which increases or decreases the value of individuals if they are under or over represented in the sample. With all these different elements involved, a sampling plan is vital. This outlines the population of interest, the sampling method and sample size, and details of the sampling frame. The sampling plan must be clear and unambiguous to minimise any sampling errors which may introduce bias. As you've seen, there are many different elements to sampling, all of which must be carefully considered before you begin your research. The time and effort you put in in those early stages will certainly be rewarded with accurate, valid and reliable results which can be generalised to the whole population of interest. If you'd like to discuss sampling or any other research needs you might have, get in touch. My contact details are on the screen now.